Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can properly calibrate a temperature dependent ANSYS TNM model. So this is a temperature dependent viscoplastic material model that comes with ANSYS and I'm going to show you how you can use M calibration to calibrate the parameters and then also how to set it up in workbench and mechanical to properly get the temperature dependence that you're interested in. So the, the first step you do is open up calibration, read in your experimental data. And before you start calibrating, I recommend that you check the units uh, of the different variables that you have. So if you go to home and then you go to preferences, on the units, you can see what units M calibration will use. Typically, units are not really used, but when you export a material model to ANSYS XML format, it also exports the units. So that's important to check. So in this case, I do recommend that you use Kelvin as the temperature unit for your calibration. And then you just read in your experimental data and you set the temperature that you're interested in. In this case, this is a nylon 6.6 that I tested at two different strain rates at two different temperatures. And here is the data. And the temperature you specified with a temperature field for each load case, as you can see here. I already ran the calibration, and if you um, final results are shown here. So you can see that the fit is pretty good at all different temperatures. And uh, the parameters, the control temperature dependence is the theta hat, theta zero, and the n parameter in this uh, set of parameters. The next thing you do once you have a calibrated TNM for ANSYS, you will need to export it. So you go to material model, export. You can export it in two different formats, APDL and XML. I will, in this example, export to both of these to illustrate how this works. And that's it. Now we can go and start a workbench. So here's workbench. Uh, I have already created a test case that I want to use for this example. The first thing, though, is to check out the engineering data and the material models that are available. In this case, I had already re read in the material model that we exported. And you can read that in by go to File, Import Engineering Data, and then you just read in the XML file that you have. And then it will show up here. And these are the parameters that were exported by M calibration. And now pay attention to the temperature uh, unit here. It's in Kelvin. And uh, I recommend that you keep it in Kelvin here for, for it to work properly back in mechanical. Um, so that's, that's something that I think is important to pay attention to. Now, if we start mechanical, here is my mechanical simulation. To read in the material model, specify the material model, we can just go to the part that we're interested in. And uh, here I have a commands, uh, command snippet for this solid. And here are basically the commands that were exported by M calibration. Now you can just put them right in here by pasting them in. And that gives you a APDL input of material model for this solid. That's one way to do it. Um, and you can also do it using the XML approach. So I'm going to I'm going to click on this one and suppress it. That means that's not going to be used. And on the solid, I can click on uh, uh, MCAL material, and then you will have the material will be the MCAL material here that we have. And you see the units are in Kelvin still. Then to run a simulation, you may want to specify what temperature you want to simulate at. It could be even a temperature dependent material uh, simulation. In this case, I have a fixed temperature and this uh, right now is 333 Kelvin, but it could be any temperature because our TNM model is temperature dependent and will work for any temperature in the range for which it was calibrated. And that's, that's really it. At this point, you can just set up and start running this. And that's it. The simulation has finished. We can plot contours or whatever we're looking at. In this case, it's the Mises stress for this part at the end of the deformation. 
So if you follow these steps and you use the units and, and the system that I talked about, then you will be able to have a temperature dependent TNM in ANSYS and that can be very accurate for many simulations. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.